Girlfriend and I spent the day visiting antique shops and secondhand stores. We are both collectors. She likes to collect antique toys, and I like to collect old video games. We went from shop to shop, but I couldn't really find anything that I wanted. It was beginning to grow dark when we came across a dingy little antique shop that was tucked away on a deserted side street. When we went inside, we saw that the tiny place was cluttered with all manner of junk. They seemed to be selling dusty books, tattered clothes, clocks, ornaments, toys, and various other knickknacks. There was an old Chinese man behind the counter. We looked around for a few minutes, but there was nothing interesting. I was about to suggest we leave with my, when my girlfriend suddenly exclaimed, Oh, look at this! She was holding up some kind of weird metal shape, about the size of a soccer ball. It had 20 sides. I think it's called an icosahedron. This is the point where everything started to go wrong. What is it? I asked. I don't know, she replied, but it looks amazing. We took the weird shape over to the counter and my girlfriend asked the old Chinese man how much it cost. When the old man looked up and saw the shape, the expression on his face changed. He seemed astonished. Uh, oh, this, he stuttered. This, uh, yeah, how much this, I don't, well, you, wait, I come. The old man disappeared into the back room, and we overheard him arguing with his wife in Chinese. We couldn't understand anything they were saying, but his wife seemed to be very angry. He came back a few minutes later, clutching a yellowed piece of paper. This unusual toy, he said, handing the paper to my girlfriend, name Rifon Yuvi here. Tell everything. On the paper, there were some handwritten instructions and a few drawings. There were some strange symbols on the yellowed paper too. It showed the metal shape changing and resembled three other shapes. In one illustration, it looked like a bear. In another, a bird, and yet another, a fish. It was kind of like a primitive transformer toy. Oh, excellent, said my girlfriend excitedly as we picked it up and began playing with it. It's like a puzzle. You like? asked the old Chinese man. I make you special price. You give me a hundred dollars. My girlfriend is very good at haggling, so she tried to get the old man to knock the price down. Finally, he said, okay, okay, you steal me, but okay, you give me $80, we make deal. We left the shop and my girlfriend was beaming from ear to ear, satisfied with her new purchase. On the way home, we stopped at a restaurant and had a nice dinner. The next day was Monday. When I got home from work, my girlfriend called me. All she could talk about was her new toy. It's amazing, she said. I really love the rainphone puzzle. I can't keep my hands off it, even at work. I managed to get it to, to look like some animals. This toy is way more addictive than your stupid video game. After we hung up, she sent me a picture for holding the shape. It had a head and two legs protruding from it and sort of looked like a bear. I sent her a text message. Uh, great. The next day, when I was driving home from work, she called me again. Seriously, this is so awesome, she cried. I spent all night playing with it and barely got a wink of sleep. I managed to get it in the form of a bear finally. You have to come over and check it out. Maybe tomorrow, I said. I'm tired. I'm just going to go home and get some sleep. You should do the same. Uh, yeah, whatever, she replied. Next I'm going to try and turn my Ryan phone into a bird. On Wednesday, when I finished work, I sent my girlfriend a text message. Hi girl, Do you get? did you get some sleep? I was thinking about coming over to see you tonight, she replied. Sorry, can't. Busy. I sent her another message. Busy with what? She didn't reply until about 11 p.m. that night. Her text message read, Busy with frying phone. She sent me a picture as well. It showed her with a toy. It was in the shape of an eagle with outstretched wings. It was so elaborate that it looked almost real. I was half expecting the hawk to start flapping its wings at any moment. On Thursday night, I was taking a shower when my phone rang. It was my girlfriend. Did you call me a few minutes ago? She asked. No, what's the matter? I asked. I got a call and it was just background noise, like someone walking around the city or something, and I heard a lot of voice yelling. Then they hung up. It was weird. You know how when you get a call, the person's name will come up on your phone or it will say restricted? Yeah. 
Well, this time, it just said beyond. It freaked me out. That's weird, I said. Do you want me to come over? No, it's okay, she replied. I'm just gonna turn off my phone and go to bed. Maybe it was just a cross line or someone dialed your number accidentally. Yeah, uh, whatever, she said. I'm trying to make a fish now. She hung up before I could say anything else. On Friday, I went straight over to my girlfriend's house after work. She was almost finished turning the rye phone into a shape of a fish. I got another weird phone call at lunchtime today, she said. When I answered, I heard a load of men and women's voices screaming. I immediately hung up. Maybe someone's playing a prank on you, I said. Or perhaps there's something wrong with your phone. She shrugged and went back to playing with her toy, twisting and turning the metal pieces. She struggled with it for hours, but she couldn't figure out how to complete the shape. Eventually, she grew tired and went to bed. That night, I had a very disturbing dream. I was in a dark valley floor, and when I looked down, I saw hundreds of naked men and women scrambling out of a huge pit. They chased after me, and I desperately tried to get away by climbing up the cliff face. I was almost at the top, almost safe, when I felt a hand grab my ankle. It was a woman, and she screamed, Take me with you! I woke up in a cold sweat. It was about 5 a.m., and I couldn't get back to sleep. I lay awake in bed, my heart pounding, wondering what the dream could be. On Saturday, my girlfriend and I went to the mobile phone shop. They checked her phone, but there was nothing wrong with it. Then, she decided she wanted to go and see a fortune teller. There was an old woman they called the Cat Lady, and she was famous for her divination abilities. We called her and made an appointment for the next day. On Sunday morning, we turned up at the cat lady's house. Her daughter opened the door and ushered us inside. The hallway was full of cats, and as soon as they saw us, they stared screeching and growling and ran away. It was very weird. The daughter led us into a room at the back of the house, where the, where the cat lady was sitting. She was surrounded by her cats. The old woman yelled at her daughter in a threatening voice, Get out of here! It was starting to freak me out. We sat down at the table and the cat lady turned her attention to us. The reason I keep so many cats is because they are sensitive to certain things, she croaked. The cats sort out the bad people and the good people. They tell me whose fortune I should read. This is the first time they have ever reacted so strongly. We told the fortune teller all about the events of the previous week. All about the strange phone calls and the weird nightmare I had. The old woman pointed at my girlfriend. Behind you, I could see something like an art object shaped like an animal, she said softly. Throw it away right now! We were confused, but the woman refused to answer any more questions. Now, please go away, she said, turning her back on us. I do not want to say any more, and I do not want to see any more. I looked at my girlfriend. Her face was pale, and she was trembling. I didn't want to leave until we got an explanation. Why? I asked the old lady. Is it cursed? What's wrong with it? I kept asking until the cat lady finally leaped out of the chair and turned to face us. It is the miniature version of hell, she screamed. It is the gate of hell. Now throw it away. Get out of here. But the money, I said weakly. You don't need it, she screamed. The old woman's face was twisted with rage and fear. It was the scariest thing I had ever seen. We ran out of the fortune teller's house and went straight back to my girlfriend's place. I grabbed the Ryan phone and the instructions and wrapped them up in a newspaper. Then I secured it with duct tape and threw it in the garbage. Nothing strange happened after that. A few weeks later, I went to visit my girlfriend. She was sitting in front of the TV with a pen and paper in her lap. It's an anagram, she said. Ryan phone. It's an anagram. What do you mean? I asked. Change the letters around. It spells inferno. Hell. I wonder what would happen if I managed to complete the final shape. I guess it would become an integrated fish when I completed. I tried to laugh, but my throat was dry. I hoped the weird toy was sitting in a garbage dump or a landfill somewhere. I was praying that nobody else would find it.